do we need regulation and what are the chances of it? So quick round of applause for BI Infamy. Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for the intro. So there I'm a lawyer from Germany and I'm specialized in the field of or the legal challenges regarding ICOs, blockchain networks and cryptocurrencies. And really there are a couple of things I want to talk about. So firstly, why do we need a regulation? How such a regulation can look like? And what can we expect from such a regulation? I know normally a lot of you here probably think when they hear about regulation, oh, my portfolio is going to drop 30%. That's the main reaction I get when I talk about regulation. But I will show you today why a good regulation will benefit the technology, benefit the market, and finally benefit your portfolio too. So the news about regulation hardly ever break off. We have the total cover from different approaches like adoption and prohibition. We have Japan closing its exchanges because of lacking security. We have China banning ICOs. We have the US and Securities and Exchange Commission warning its citizens to be aware of frauds. Then we have countries like Cambodia and Venezuela who are launching their own cryptocurrency to just somehow save their economy. So we have really approaches who are going from total adaption to rejection. In Europe, the chairman of the European Banking Authority, Andrea Henry, finally found some reasonable words. He thinks he wants a re regulation in Europe, which is really good thought of and which does not kill the innovation. But a lot of you probably think, why do we need regulation at all? Isn't an unregulated market going to outgrow a regulated market? So let me give you a little example why we need regulation. Think of a big stock company like Apple, Amazon, Alphabet. Their CEO tells the media they tripled their sales and the stock price explodes. And at the top, he sells all of his shares and he makes a lot of money. And then it comes out, it was just a lie. They didn't triple their sales. So does this sound criminal to you? Of course it is. It's called illegal insider trading. However, in the crypto market, this behavior would go totally unpunished because we don't have laws which are tailored on cryptos. And it's really difficult to transfer the laws from the stock market to the crypto market. So now you know why you should not trust every self-called crypto expert and entrepreneur on social media who gives you advice to buy this ICO or to buy this new cryptocurrency. And this little example is just the top of the iceberg why we need regulation. Generally spoken, cryptocurrencies developed, as everybody knows, through the backbone of blockchain technology and were once only associated with sales in the underbelly of the internet. And that's by design because tracking the transactions made through Bitcoin, Ethereum and other currencies is really difficult, although not impossible, but difficult. And on the one hand, that really supports the privacy and the whole aspect that people can do what they want, they have their freedom. On the other hand, it leaves those participating in ICOs or investing in cryptocurrencies with as good as no protection against thefts, exit scams, and illegal frauds. So imagine in the last three years, since 2015, almost half a billion, $400 million, were stolen by cyber attackers from those participating in ICOs. That's just the field of ICOs. Then we have the whole, the whole crypto market and blockchain market also affecting the stock market in the negative way. You have companies coming out of nowhere who have all of a sudden a blockchain solution. But they don't even have a real pro product or they don't even have a technological background. They just come out of nowhere just and so their stock price arises. And the US Security and Exchange Commission, because in the US they really had a big problem with it, just startups coming out of everywhere who were before real estate or health business and now they are at blockchain to their name and they just want to pump their stock prices. And the US Security and Exchange Commission really want to tackle these problems, but they don't have a legal base to work with. And that's the biggest thing, the biggest problem we have. We have all these exit scams, dangers. We have 
exchange which are shut down because of lacking security, cyber attackers stealing money from exchanges, and people don't have a legal base to get their money back or to get compensatory. So because of all of these problems, we need a regulation, a solid regulation, which will give people the chance to sue for damages or to get compensatory if they get a victim to somehow a scam. And think of it, think of the ICOs. It seems like the Wild West. Like we have pump and dump schemes, you have crypto famous pushing the ICOs, and you can't do anything about it. So that's the thing why I need, why I think we need a regulation which tackles three main parts. Firstly, the whole virtual currencies, the ICOs, and finally, the legal validity of blockchain and smart contracts. Because at the moment, the laws are mostly transferred from the stock market, but it's, it really depends on the conception of the ICO. For example, if you have an ICO which is more focused on utility, like a utility token, you can't really transfer the laws from, for securities. So for that reason, we really need a regulation which is tailored on cryptos, and which can be a safe harbor for investors, entrepreneurs, and legal enforcement to really do something about the problems and dangers we have. But how can such a regulation look like? How can we regulate? There are many different approaches. I will show you the four main approaches. Firstly, it's possible to directly regulate the end users. That means that governments directly impose laws on the end users of who are using blockchain applications or the networks. And while it's theoretically possible because we have upcoming quantum computers, big data analytics, sophisticated data mining, governments have the chance to encrypt and identify the people who are acting in a way which is not compliable with the law. However, practically, it's really burdensome and time consuming to regulate the end users, and it really is an incomplete solution. Because if you think of it, and we have already learned that in the context with copyright infringement, that imposing laws on the end users is not a complete solution. And if you think about it, it, it does not tackle the whole problems we have. Because they are not the biggest players who do, un who do criminal behavior. And if we think about the future, this will not be the perfect solution to tackle the problems I mentioned before. So secondly, we could regulate the intermediaries interacting within the blockchain system and force them to police the system and to guard the systems. So there would be laws on transaction processors, on miners, on exchanges, on transport layers. And if you think about that idea, it really sounds reasonable because they are keeping the system going. And if you force them to keep the system going in a way which complies with the law, it makes sense to regulate there. However, the downside is that you shift a lot of power to them. And you could even think about governments taking over the role of intermediaries. If they launch their own cryptocurrency and they are taking over the part of miners, they could really manipulate or force how this blockchain or how this whole network is going to develop. So you see that already, that also has a downside. The third, the third idea which could be how to regulate is when we regulate the code and the architecture. That means that governments impose laws on the developers who develop blockchain-based applications and smart contracts. If you think about it, code has long been recognized as a powerful tool to regulate. And because new technologies, even we have seen with the internet and blockchain and smart contracts, they really rely on code to define the operations and to define the boundaries what users can do and cannot do. So governments could mandate via laws that developers are forced to implement a backdoor, a governmental backdoor into a blockchain-based protocol and into smart contracts. So governments could stop autonomous running smart contracts or blockchain applications which, doesn't, which do not comply with the law. And if you think about decentralized autonomous organizations, 
fully running on smart contracts and artificial intelligence, this could really make sense because these organizations could take over a whole economy when they are developed with artificial intelligence, so they always do the best thing for the company and they do not comply with the law. They could get a, a whole monopoly on the whole ecosystem. And if there's not a backdoor to stop them, you can't do anything about it. it. The system will just run and run. So in that sense, it really can make, so in that case, it really can make sense to regulate or to regulate at the roots, the code and the architecture. However, the power from governments to regulate the code and the software developers is not boundless. On the one hand, you have, because of the strong anonymization in the blockchain community, we, we don't even know at the moment who were the creator of Bitcoin. It's still under the pseudonym. It's still Satoshi Nakamoto, but nobody knows who is that or which group was that. So for that reason, it's difficult to regulate the software developers. And on the other hand, by, in many countries, there's such thing as freedom of software. The software and the development is protected by law. So it's really hard to enforce laws on them and put boundaries on the developers. And I think, I personally think, regulating the code and architecture would really hurt the whole innovation and would just force people to go to other countries or to act under pseudonyms. So we really need to think about different solutions. Fourthly, and that's a diff really different approach from the others mentioned before, we could regulate via social norms. Because in the blockchain, the governments could think about it to regulate the whole blockchain by imposing social norms within the blockchain-based community. Because blockchains rely on distributed consensus, that means that most or 51% of the people interacting in the network need to agree with the new development. So for that reason, if you establish social norms, which are guarded by the system itself, it's a really powerful tool to regulate. And it would not, and the benefit would be that the system stays by itself. So the intermediaries as miners would somehow act as judges who govern and police the system. And the difference to the second approach is that they are not forced by law, more they are forced by social norms. However, the downside is it shifts a lot of power to miners, which in my eye are really powerful enough or powerful enough. And on the other hand, it, we don't have then a really good legal base to work with. So as a conclusion, you see, and that's often the case with regulation, none of these four mentioned approaches is perfect. They all have strengths and weaknesses. And if somebody really wants to deploy or to act in the whole blockchain network in a criminal way, they will do it. How, it doesn't matter how you regulate. But a good regulation will prevent a lot of unlawful behavior. So for that reason, really need a regulation. But what do I consider as the, oh, sorry. What do I consider as a good way to regulate? For me personally, I think the best way would be to regulate the intermediaries, because they keep, really keep the system going. And if we regulate them in the way that they are forced to police the system, you still leave the system some kind of freedom without the government imposing laws on the end users directly. And you, you tackle the problem that the intermediaries at the moment can do whatever they want and develop the system however they want. We see, we see that with the hard forks, like they are doing whatever they want. So that would be, in my eyes, the best solution to regulate. However, a regulation will come for sure. That thing is for sure. And it will come, as I think, mainly with regulating the intermediaries and the exchanges, because we need that the exchanges have a safe infrastructure and that there is a legal base if they, are get, if they are a victim of cyber attackers and people get their money stolen from exchanges or their coins that you have a legal base to work with and to sue these exchanges to get your money back. However, we also need laws on the end users if you think of the whole tax, of the whole taxation or the sub subject of taxes. And finally, I think we also need, especially in the case, that's a thing of the future, 
with decentralized autonomous organizations, we will need laws on the routes, on the developers, to implement a backdoor to stop decentralized autonomous organizations which do not comply with the law. So for that reason, I think it will, the regulation which will come will be a mixture with it. And as I mentioned before, the social norms, they are also really powerful to regulate. Think of the example of the DAO. Probably a lot of you know about it, where cyber attackers have stolen from this project, the DAO, almost $50 million. And the community solved the problem by itself, which is, for me was really astonishing that nobody went in front of a judge or sued for damages. It were totally solved by the community. However, this will be, not be the solution in the future if this even gets bigger and bigger. So as you see, that's the possible approaches how we can regulate. And I think we all and the blockchain community should reach out to the regulators so we can have an influence on the regulators to regulate in a way which does not kill the innovation. Because the regulation will come, that is for sure. But as I promised in the beginning, I will show you what benefits can we expect from a regulation. So what can we really expect and what's the good thing coming with regulation? Firstly, of course, we will have a strong infrastructure or we have a legal base who protects investor interests. We will have a legal base to work with. But the main and most important thing is a different one which will come with regulation. So how many of you have used some kind of sharing economy? Uber, Airbnb, blah, blah, car. Please raise your hand. So see, that's a lot of you. What's the main thing this sharing economy is based on? What's the main thing? It's tr right, it's trust. Trust in the application, trust in the people using it, and trust in the legal base we have. And as more and more people trust, for example, Airbnb, I know a lot of people who are using more Airbnb than they are booking hotels. So as this arises and the trust in the whole system arises, the economy grows. The sharing economy like Airbnb, Uber is really, really big. So in other words, trust equals growth and regulation equals trust. And if we think about it transferring to the whole crypto economy, if we have a strong legal base, more and more people will trust the whole legal base and will trust the whole economy. Because if you read the recent fintech reports from big institutions like experts from Visa, Santander, Alipay, Citibank, they all agreed about one thing, that investing in ICOs and cryptocurrencies is more risk than it's an opportunity. And if you think about it, that they see it more as a risk than an opportunity, it's lacking of trust. So if we develop a regulation where more and more people trust the crypto economy, the user, the user base will arise and it will open the way for big institutional uh, investors because for whom at the moment the market is unpredictable, it's just purely too dangerous because if they get some kind of victim or their money gets stolen, they don't have a chance to get it back. So and if the user base arise and we have a growing whole market cap because big institutional investors get in, then because the supply is limited, as you all know, the prices will arise. And as the prices arise, the whole economy will grow. So in other words, a uh, uh, crypto economy, which, is, which has a regulatory framework, is more likely to grow than economy which is not regulated. So for that reason, if you think about it, we have a safe harbor then where people can really rely on. We have a safer environment where people who get victim of an exit scam or where their money gets stolen can get their money back. Because at the moment, if they are coming scams out, out of everywhere, and if people get a victim to such a scam, the demand of prohibition gets really high. We have seen that before in the history. And we don't want a prohibition because that's a really bad thing for the whole innovation. So now when you hear about regulation, you don't need to be scared anymore because <coughs> regulation equals trust. 
and trust equals growth, as we have seen before. Thank you very much, and I will be open now for your question if you have any. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I consider myself influenced. <laughs> I hope so. Regulation equals trust, trust equals growth. If that's the only phrase you remember, I mean, that's huge. All right, well done, mate. So. That's excellent. That's excellent. That's absolutely excellent. Thank you. And we'll be thinking about it all day now. Right here. Is that all right here? Then we'll come back to you. And um, we'll go over here. Anybody else like a question? Um, I'm speaking spe or asking specifically in the context of open public blockchains. Um, take Bitcoin as an easy example. Obviously, it was designed as a kind of censorship resistance that by the cypherpunks that they, they in their mind the real idea was was that the, the blockchain um, and bitcoin itself would be self-regulating through code um, so they would view methods of regulation like regulating end users intermediaries miners nodes or developers as attack vectors um, and they would probably int interpret regulation as as an attack so I was kind of put to you that intermediaries like the miners and nodes are regulators of the blockchain. And so any attempt to externally regulate the blockchain itself and its infrastructure is a kind of a, a takeover or attack. Um, so the, the question was about, obviously lightning channels are gonna be part of the infrastructure. Um, just, just, I wonder if you unpack a bit more detail in terms of how they can possibly even regulate something like a lightning channel or your perception of that versus, obviously they're gonna regulate wherever fiat is and, and, and ICOs and things, but it's more specifically how, how you see that they could possibly regulate lightning channels. So that's a really good question. If I understand it right, you really mean the new developments like lightning channels and how, how they could put, impose laws on that? So that's a really good question. If you think about it, the, poss the possibility would be to impose laws globally on the whole miners, like everybody who is interacting in the system and it's tra transparent, you can see who's mining. So if you impose laws, if you, take, if you have some kind of capacity mining, you could force them to only allow systems or developments which comply with the law. So of course I see the downside that it would shift a little bit or we, it would harm the decentralization. But I think, in, our, in my opinion, we need to give a little bit to get most of it. So if there are laws that force the miners that they have to only allow new developments which comply with the law, then it would be possible that we develop a system which is running by itself in the future but totally compliable with the law. For that reason, regulators would need to step in if there is coming a new innovation to prove it if it's or to somehow secure that it's compliable with the law but if you think like some things at like the lightning network it i don't i am not i have not the opinion that you need to regulate everything you can also take tech the approach that you first let things kind of go and if you have bad developments then you tackle it and i think that will be the case especially with new developments because as we all know, regulators, they are not, not all of them are really into the business and really have the technical background to understand everything. So if then there's a, a, a criminal development, then they will tackle it. Does this answer it, Alma? It was pretty good. You good? I have a gentleman here. Um, so uh, most presentations until now have kind of talked about, the, have built up a credibility, right? Uh, so they've talked about you know, the history and successes in the history and hence established why it should be done now again, right? In your opinion, can you give us some good examples from history which have resulted in regulation being able to really uh, affect lives of the common man? Um, and of course, I mean, you know, we all have heard of Equifax or Facebook and and these kind of things that have happened, and, and of course the banking scams. So, you know, how has regulation prevented all these things from happening before? So, what's the credibility with which the crypto community should accept regulation? That's a good question. That's a really good question. Like, 
that did everybody on see us what what can we expect or why should the whole community accept the regulation? What are examples from the past? So firstly, that does not answer the question, but a regulation will come, that's for sure. But I think the history has shown, and in, as I mentioned in the sharing economy, in the context with the internet, a regulation always gives the institutionals, the big institutional sorry, investors. Sorry, but, but Uber was not regulated. No, we have, we have laws which are transferred on Uber, which, for example, where people, can sue, where people can sue for damages if they have a problem with their Uber. And I think mostly because the whole blockchain market is small, we don't have so many people who are really need to rely on judges and on the law to somehow get their compensat compensatory. But if more and more people get victim to, sing, to things, and we have seen this with the internet, if they get a victim to, or when they use their phone and they were just an application downloading things and they have to, uh, very high internet costs, a good regulation, a European regulation prevented that. It prevented that. It's, forbidden that there's something installed in the back when you download something and it gets money from you or it arises your whole internet costs. And the whole thing is, I think, transferable to the crypto economy where it will lead to that that people can have or can sleep in the night really good because they are thinking, OK, if something bad happens, I, I can rely on something. Because if you totally leave it unregulated, it's like the Wild West. The strong will survive, but they are always smaller. And I think the small ones are the end users or the investors who are only investing in a small way. And laws would really protect the small players in the business. So I think, I hope that answers. <laughs> so you wanted examples from the past. Yeah, as I mentioned, for in the whole internet context and also in the sharing economy. But do you, can you give any more detail to your question or how do you want it? What what you expecting, or why would you, why would you not accept a regulation? What would, what would be your argument against it? There's no argument against my my question is still examples. So. Yeah, examples. It's the internet. It's uh, the sharing economy, and uh, I will take your question later. And it will. It's also, even if you think about buying something, if you go and buy something, and you have a problem with it. What, what can you do? You can rely on the law that it is fixed, that you can go back and change it. So this all the things which law made possible to, that we all can interact in a very good way with each other and can trust the system. So yeah. that the whole developing laws, the whole development of laws would be the, the argument that we needed because everybody can live then in a silent way and in a good way because he can trust the system and cr trust the lawyers. Maybe follow on up offline. Josh, you have a question, mate? Um, firstly, I'd just like to, to thank you for that. It's really nice to get um, someone that's got a professional background, as you do, kind of give a bit of a positive light on regulation, because it is, is quite daunting. So I actually um, own one of the largest GPU mining companies in the UK selling to retail customers. So regulation for me is a minor, um, and for my customers, you know, the guys in the room, you know, because at the moment, as it stands, I can sell anyone in this room a product you know, and it can earn some pretty serious money. You know, I sell money-making machines, which is mental. Um, so I appreciate, I'm very realistic to the fact that at some point in the future, there will be some type of regulation, particularly for miners, domestic miners, you know, all of us in the room. So, you know, you knowing what you do from the industry, how do you perceive the, the positivity of regulation, particularly for mining, um, being, being a net benefit? Because at the moment, it's interesting you say how we operate within the legal laws that we have, because obviously, for me as a, as a, as a director of a company that sells stuff, I'm bound, but you know, for UK law, I have to offer warranty and service, and you know, any yeah. of my, my physical products fall within that category. So people like coming to us because of that security of a real person, real place, real offices, you know, we do things the right way, unlike these online crazy companies where you mine and never see anything, right? So I, I like that. I like the trust and tangibility. So moving forward in regards to where this is going, how do you see actual regulation of the mining process itself being an advantage for, for normal people? Um, I think, thank you for the question. It's a really good question. I think the advantage for the people would be that the whole system matures in a way which is more trustable and more re reliable. If you think about it, if you regulate the miners like you, that you only 
develop a system or let it mature and develop and put new blocks in the system in a way which complies with the law, it will help the whole system to be trusted because people are like the normal person is just thinking, okay, I can trust the system because it's developing in a way which is comply with the law and which will have which I can really trust on and rely on. All right, one more, then we go close up. Firstly, thank you. Um, you've spoken about uh, regulation equaling trust, equaling growth. Uh, my question is, how can we trust the regulators? Because, <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of the regulators around the world have been, uh, they're open to lobbying, aren't they? Yeah. And there's vested interests who don't want to see this space grow for their nefarious reasons. So how do we find ourselves with regulators that we can trust in order to grow? Thank you, yeah, that's a really good point, and I, I agree with you. Um, and as I mentioned before, I, I have given some examples. It's really hard, and because there's a strong lobbyism, that's why I said the blockchain community, like everybody, should reach out to regulators. You have big companies, and the regulators really searching for experts who can really help them regulating and who understand the system. And at the moment, a lot of the big players in the whole blockchain community refuse to work with regulators because they are still have the opinion, OK, we don't want any regulation. Code can regulate by itself. And I think the solution would be that we can trust regulation also is that we reach our hand out to regulators and that the blockchain community has the influence on regulation. And the regulators I know, and for example, the European Banking Authority, there are some heads who are really want a regulation which does not kill the innovation. Andrea Henry said in recent reports that he wants regulators to be really, really look of that they don't kill the development of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I think he has a big influence on regulation and he will take part of it. So the regulation I know, especially from Europe and from the US, they don't want to kill the innovation because they also know that it will come for sure. So. I think we can really be relaxed that the regulation that will come will not be too harsh. Only We have seen it in China where, where they really punished it, but in Europe I think they have a different approach. And from the regulators I know, they really want an approach which allows the whole system to develop and to mature. Okay. Cool. That brings us to a close. So one more final round of applause for Brian, please. Thank you.